the garden the fascia falcon from the bronx looking to go 10 and 0 as a professional tonight six rounds between him and pedro vincente Bottom right of your screen in the black and silver trim with orange Falcon, Razor with the singles at distance, sharp jab, very potent counter right hand too. Yep. Ready, those first few seconds, just the edge of hand speed apparent. Yeah, with a guy like Falcon who's so sharp and quick, a lot of times he can slow the pace by just firing those quick sharp shots, it puts his man on, on notice, and then he can take his time to set up the next power shot. Vincente, tough operator. He was really beaten up by, by Floyd Schofield. He's another excellent young prospect. Castro was in full control of him throughout their fight as well. Just putting shots together as the as the contest went on and finished strongly. I think we saw flashes of, of what he can do, but since he's been boxing outside of Puerto Rico, just decided, I think, to kind of give up the, the ambition, go on the road and make a living. Nothing wrong with that. And he's holding centre ring so far. There's Falcon just managing the distance at range behind that sharp jab. Not for nothing, going the distance with those kinds of prospects, you know, show, show and field and, uh, and, and Mark Castro, it, that's, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. He's obviously in great condition and he's very durable. You see with Vincente, he's, he's giving up a little bit of height and reach. He does tend to just lean a little bit with his shots and that will leave him open potentially to, to counters, which are the Falcons bread and butter as this fight goes on. But it's a patient opener from the fighter from the Bronx, just sitting on the outside, waiting for opportunities. Just a little short with that right hand, lands the jab. A lot of arm punching so far from Vicente, you can see. Does not have crushing power, does not have very quick hand speed. You know, the physical gifts seem to be lying, lying in the corner of Falcon. Falcon's been, uh, gets a good work in with Richardson Hitchens, who's out against Montana Love. Live on the zone in three weeks' time. That's some good, sharp New York work. Isn't Hitchinson, it? Absolutely. Yeah. But very different body type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 35 seconds to go in round number one. So those of you just joining the broadcast, welcome to Before the Bell. Chris Lloyd here and Chris Algieri to talk you through the fights on the undercard. There's Falcon lands a nice left hook off the right hand to the body. Controlled, measured start from the Bronx fighter. Just leaning away, trying to draw the lead from Vincente. Just lands a cuff in right hand. Problem is, of course, for a fighter like Falcon, if you get too comfortable against the fighter who you feel is a level below you early in the fight, you, you can drop to their level. He needs to just slowly go up through the gears here. Yeah, that's what I meant, you know, by having someone in front of him that's going to test him as he goes. I mean, he's got to step up and really show that, that he's got that talent and he is that special kind of guy. A, I hate to use the word jobber, but a jobber like Vicente can kind of lull you to sleep and, like you said, drop down to their level a bit. Here we see some of that action from round number one. You see that speed and quickness of Falcone early and that basic doggedness, workmanlike style of Vincente coming in. He punches with you. You had mentioned he had done that with yep. Mark Castro, um, which is a testament to his durability in his chin. He's not worried about the shots coming at him. He's trying to land. But I also think he has to do that, doesn't he? Because he hasn't got the speed of foot or, or hands to wait until these guys have got in and out. He has to, he has to take his moments while they're letting the hands go. George Foreman used to always say that timing beats speed. I don't know how much timing Vicente has, but if he punches with you, he can catch it. Yeah, I bet you wish he punched like George Foreman as well. Who doesn't? I wish <laughs> I punched like George Foreman. So where we go into round number two. Falcon already just up in the tempo and the work rate right here, putting the shots together after a, a quiet opening round. Looking that left low and high. Yeah, I like the level changes from Vicente, uh, from Falcone rather. He's going up, down, up. Uh, he don't, throws the jab high, the two low, and the three up top, <laughs> right on cue. Mm -hmm. And that's been landing quite well. He's landed three, three of those combinations in the last round of the game. I mentioned that fight with Joseph Perez in September, split decision. In reality, probably won four or five of the six rounds. He's under a little bit of pressure now and again. And as I said, you know, always 
kind of throws that jab at the same tempo and, and pace and that was really where he kind of let himself down but the last fight against uh, Aldemar Silva in Stanford hurt him a number of times early it was clearly worked on what we've just seen shades of in this round doubling up the jab tripling up putting his shots together working to body and head and while he hurt him it didn't let him off the hook and that ferocity that, that finishing instinct is well crucial if you're going to go up the levels in this division particularly if he were able to stop the Sente tonight, that would be a, a nice feather in his cap. He's just got fellow prospects that have gone the distance with him. So Low with the left hook there. Referee just warning uh, Falcon to keep him up. Minute 30 to go in the second. I like how you can see Falcon. He's, he's thinking. He's setting things up. He's looking to, to set traps. Nice to see in a young fighter. Problem is with a guy like Vicente. If you just hit him with everything you've got early, he'll just go into a shell and then it'll be impossible to, to bring him out. You almost need to just give him a little bit of hope, try and bring him onto something here. Nice double jab up and down again from Falcon, just managing this fight at distances. He's done so well throughout his career so far. hard jabs from Falcone, utilizing that height and reach advantage. Nice faint work there. Faint one, two, three. Very, very nice work from Falcone. Again, Vicente just walks through it, eats the shots, keeps stepping on him. See uh, Falcone just going a little bit Philly shell there. It's kind of how he uh, posture he adopts. Mm. He tends to be under a little bit of pressure on the ropes, but he counts as well out of that. That stance. Looks for that right hand counter. Back just touching the ropes for the first time in the contest. And this is where Vicente, if he's gonna have some success, could be just up close. And Falcon hasn't got space behind him to work. And Vicente just finishing the round a little strongly. Falcon looking for the counter. Nice round for Falcon. Precision was very high. Didn't like that putting himself on the ropes at the end of the round, but other than that, it was a perfect round. Here we see some of that sharp work, that combination where he starts high, works low, and then comes back up top with the left hook. Has been working quite well. He had a right hand on the end of that as well. Yeah, he turned the right over nice, didn't he? That was a beautiful hook off the jab combination as he saw that his opponent slipped on the inside. He pulled out through that left hook. Nice little cuffing shot. Starting to see Vincente punch with him a little more, though, when he can. As I think we expected he might, and just towards the end of that round, put him under a little bit of pressure for the first time, managed to back him up onto the ropes, and. I'll just give him a little bit of hope that he can have pockets of success. It isn't going to be a range. I think we all know that by now. Yeah, when you're outgunned in terms of talent, physical, physical talent, physical ability, and style, I mean, it's really all you can do is hope to make it a tough, rough fight. Vicente hasn't been able to do that just yet. So into the third we go. The heads clashed, all the, all the feet tangled, or a bit of both there. Headbutt, we have a cut. Doesn't seem like we have any blood, but it could be wrong. Yeah, we do. Just from looking over our shoulder, of course, we're in the studio here, folks. Oh, yeah. There is blood over the left eye. And you can now see it too. We'll take another look at that in between the round, but pretty sure it was a foot tangle and a head clash as a result. A tough man, though, in Chentain. Don't think. It's going to be uh, too consequential for him, especially the distance that we've got left, just three rounds after this one. And yeah, the, the cut doesn't seem to be in a really bad spot either. It's outside, above the eye. It seems that, like the blood stream is going around his cheek and not into the eye. That's, that's when it gets dangerous. That's the main problem, isn't it? Yeah, and it looks, uh, looks okay so far. We'll keep an eye on that as the rounds go on. Oh, nice counter right hand over the top there from Falcon. Oh, beautiful shot again. Very, very precise shots. Like I said, last round, he really found his range and his timing. Ooh, good body shot there from Vicente. Mm. Already turning through that right hand as it just slid past the, the right cheek of Vicente, just chops away on the inside. You'll notice we've, got, we've lost the, uh, the round clock. It's uh, just over a minute or so to go of this round. Ooh, some blinking now, so that blood is getting in the eye. See Vicente wiping the blood away.
I remember I, uh, I, had, I had broken the nose and cut the eye of one of my opponents early in my career, and I remember timing his blinks to try and hit him while his eye was shut because the blood was dripping in. I've never heard that. Or he was wiping his nose. I was trying to use my speed. I've never heard that before. Wow. Did it work? I mean, I won the fight, so. So, yes. <laughs> so, I'll take it. I won every round. Vincente just walking through the work and trying to get back on the ropes. One minute to go in round number three. Mm, nice jab there. Stopped Vicente in his tracks. I'd like to see Falcon use more of those. There it is, those feints. He did that quite well last round. Just getting the shorter man to bite just a little bit and then reach and counter. That's what we talked about Vincente, just, just lean a little bit in with his shots and can be vulnerable to the uppercut as the shorter fighter and just saw Falcon line him up for one there, first time in the contest where we see that as the rounds go on, just holding him at bay with the left hand as Vincente leads with the left hook. It almost looks like that blood kind of spurred Vicente on a little bit, he's, he's been having a better round. He actually was able to put some leather on Falcon. Yeah, just a sense of urgency about his work as we hear the 10 second clapper for the end of round number three. Falcon hands low, baiting Vincente in. Okay, have a look at the uh, head clash in a few moments time. Let's have a look at the cut first. Yeah, we yeah. just dipped over his front foot, didn't he, as he came in. Now, I mean, nothing can be done about that, no, unfortunately. No, nothing can be done. That's a kind of an awkward situation. Yeah. Feet became tangled as he fell the direction. Yeah. There was a clash of heads, yes. Really nobody's fault. Now he, he's got to get in low too if he's going to get past the, the jab, which has been pretty consistent from, from Falcone. But in doing so, uh, that's the kind of thing that can happen, often does happen when there's a bit of height discrepancy between fighters. But they're doing a good job on that in the corner. You know, and I don't want to make light of cuts. I was saying earlier that, you know, it's not in like a bad position. Cuts still really hurt. Yep. You know, I think people at home kind of forget that. They yeah. see a guy gets a little slice, but really what's happening is your, your, your skulls are banging together and the skin gets split away. There's actually always a contusion underneath there too, so everyone the next day is always bruised. Oh, it hurts too. Oh, it hurts a, tr hurts a, a, a ton. Yeah. And a lot of times you can actually even be rocked from a, a clash of heads. So yeah. you always got to be careful of that as well. Well, I mentioned Reshat Mati's last fight down in Mexico City where he really suffered with the altitude. There were three bad head clashes in that contest as well. You could see the whole thing was really affecting him. He had to, he had to dig in mentally, physically to, to stay disciplined in that instance. But uh, well, Vicente, they've, they've done their best on that in between the rounds. And back to work they go. Mm. Alcon looking for that counter right hand now, just letting him in the front door, but punishing him on the way in. Then starts to put the shots together. Lovely combination and finishes up to the body. Yeah, I believe if Alcon were to get Vicente out of there, it would be off of that. You know, be beating him down by attrition, using those sharp counters and then following up. You know, we've seen we've seen flashes of it, but I'd love to see Falcone let his hands go a little more. He has the hand speed advantage. He has the length advantage. You know, put some combinations together. Put, put some hurt on your man. In the last minute or so, he's just been trying to set Vincente up for for the counters, trying to draw that lead. Just jabs to maintain some space and just finds the exit. In danger of getting caught on the ropes there, but he got himself out of that one. Just steps around again. Yeah, he uses that nice hook to clean up and finish to, to, to plan his escape quite often, which is smart when you got a guy who's shorter and he's going to try and pin you on the ropes. Yeah, kind of second era Mayweather stuff, isn't it? I think he's probably watched him looking at some of the traps that he sets, the way he throws his shots. A little bit Philly shell when he does go onto the ropes. Yeah, that was slick. Yeah, he's just desperate for Vicente to commit. Nice high, nice low jab off the, the high feint. Vincente, he's taken some good clean shots, but he's been unbothered really through the best part of four rounds here. Yeah, you can see he's physically a strong guy. He's, he's very durable. We mentioned his, his past fights against top prospects that he went the distance. He's taking all of these punches quite well. Looks to be in good condition, so no, no, no easy task. No, it's not. That was a, a nice left hook just then. Just knocked him off balance for, for a moment. And a beautiful little spin off the, the left hook there from Falcon. Just stands in front of him a little too long there. Just eats a couple in return. 
Again, that's one thing. Unfortunately, you know, Vicente doesn't have hand speed. He doesn't have the length. He doesn't seem to have power either. He's not a heavy-handed guy. Physically strong, but not necessarily a puncher. Oh, nice jab there. Snaps the head back. Oh, God, you see him drip, drop there, just looking for that counter right hand. Just misses with it as he slid past. Vincente back to center ring. End of round number four, two to go. Excellent jabbing round from Falcon. Starting to fill up a little bit here in the garden as well. I mean, it's going to be really busy later on. Just uh, a flavor of what's to come. Real mix of cultures. Polish, the Italians, the Albanians in the house as well. Of course, the Irish and the New Yorkans as well, supporting these fighters here. And of course, Edgar Belanga in our main event. You pretty much just mentioned New York City here. Well, <laughs> New York City is in the room. Microcosm of the city, yeah, it is indeed. And all right, he's in full control. The Fasio Falcon with uh, a couple of rounds to go. Cruising on his way to victory number 10. Has this man got anything in the locker? It looks unlikely from what we've seen, but he is durable. He's played his part so far. Now, Falcon's been living up to his, his nickname quite well, Sniper. He's been very, very sharp, very precise, setting setting his, his traps from long range and, and, and pulling that trigger. Love that right hand over the top. It's been a good weapon the last couple of rounds. Mm. Check left hook there is Vincente just stepped in and the right hand drifted just for the first time. Falcon on the front foot looking to be a little more aggressive. Just close this fight out. Oh. Lovely right hand just turned the knuckles right over on the point of the chin. And well, Vincente, good chin, isn't he? Yeah, that one looked like it buckled him a little bit. There might be an opportunity here for Falcon. There's a lot of time left in this round. When he sensed that. He can get this one done. He's got a couple of rounds in which to do it. And as I mentioned, the last fight did finish much stronger, starting to put the shots together. And if you know you've only got what, five minutes left, he can start to go through the gears here and try and test his man out, see where he is. He's smart for Falcone to go to the body. You know, Vincente's looking for those headshots. He's been taking them well all night. He's keeping that guard, that guard very high. He's leaving those rib, the rib cage open. Good shot there from Falcone to the midsection. Just watch that big overhand right from a long way away, slide over the top of him. And again, just looking to pot shot with that counter right hand. You know, when you've got a journeyman type guy in front of you, like, like a Vincente, you know, a Vincente who's, who's you know, durable, physically strong, wants to go the distance, a lot of times you can break their will by making them miss consistently. If they don't see a way to win, if they don't see a way to touch you, it's a lot easier to get them to quit, to force that stoppage. If Vincente feels like he can touch you with some leather, he's going to try and win, and he's going to be there all night long. But if you're able to make him miss and make him pay, a lot of times you can get those guys out of it. Yeah, the little pockets where he's likely to have as much success as he can, probably here really, but you can see Falcon just brace for, for that counter. Vincente trying to let the hands go. Falcon just leaning back, finding the exit. It's like a little abrasion or cut under the eye of Vincente, probably courtesy of those right hands. That Falcon's been landing the last two rounds. Just missed the uh, the uppercut counter again. Just trying to box himself in and get Vincente to commit at the moment, Falcon. 45 seconds to go in the fifth. Yeah, my, my one complaint from Falcon is what you said from the top. You know, he's a single shot puncher. I would love to see him build. He, he builds punch to punch, but he doesn't put them together in combination. Yeah. It's going to be tough to get a guy like Vincente out of there if you're not throwing combinations. Sharp jab, stops Vicente right in his boots. Vicente hands high, a bit of blood just trickling down the, the left cheek again. He just marches into range. Trying to take the sting out of these shots. Left hook almost knocked him off. Balance, lovely right hand into the body. But he shoveled that in. A couple good shots there from Vicente. Came back with a counter hook, left hook upstairs. A little right hand to the body. More blood from the side of the face of Vicente. Yeah, just starting to show the marks of battle here. Here we see some of the sharp work from that last round. That one, two, three combination. That's the one combination that Falcone has been very active with and has landed well. But very, very sharp these last couple rounds. There we see that little body, that body shot of the inside that I was calling for. But he set up a lot this round with 
the work that he did the round before. He had a very good round, number four, of setting up the jab, and that, that led to some of those more power punches and combinations that we saw in the fifth round. He's got that promising quality that a lot of the best fighters have where when he's under a little bit of pressure and look let's not make out like Vincente's triple G but he's been under pressure at points and he's always looked like he's got time and space he never looks crowded never looks rusty when he's on the back foot it'll be interesting to see if he can maintain that kind of Ladies posture as the levels go up and the sixth based on what we've seen be ready for a test in his next couple of fights to see really where he's at as a young professional yeah, I mean, this has been a very workmanlike performance from Falcone. You know, he's getting the rounds in against that experienced guy. You know, you see, I, I, I even see it. Like, sometimes he'll back up against the ropes, take a touch with a shot, and he's more disappointed that he got hit than he's actually worried about it. So uh, you can tell he's working in there. Just measure him with that jab, misses the right hand behind it. He'll spring in the step of Vincente as he can see the finish line for the first time in the contest, too. Steps across to his right hand side. Mm. He left hook off the right there. In the upper part. Oh. Bad intentions on those shots. Well, he's really starting to put the spies behind him, but Vincente made a tough stuff here. Uh, nice height and reach and physicality for Falcone at this weight class. I mean, he's got, looks to have pretty long arms. He's got that hand speed, that quickness. He's got decent height. Looks to be in phenomenal condition. And at this pace, it seems like he could box 10 rounds right now. Yeah, it's going to be how can he, how can he deal with it when a, an opponent puts him under real sustained pressure? What's the engine like as the rounds creep up between 8 and 12? Nice triple jab there. Don't see that that often. Lovely right hand, left hook, and again, Vicente. Takes the shots clean, just steps on him, just trying to force Falcon to work harder than he wants to. Yeah, Falcon uses that cuffing left hook to try and lead to his exit oftentimes. will push Vincente over and then step out to the left. Vincente letting the hands go, working down and upstairs, just to put those shots coming off the arms. And Falcon, but he continues to walk forward despite all of the, the shots he's eaten over the best part of the last six rounds. Credit to him. He's been outgunned here. He's a level or so below. Outgunned, outspeeded, outskilled. Out everything, but not outwilled. He's, he stayed in the fight, dogged it out, kept the pressure on as he did against Schofield, as he did against Castro. Showing his mettle as a fighter. 30 seconds to go in the sixth and final round. Lovely little check left hook there, just exits on it. And Vicente is cut over and under the left eye, getting tagged with shots here late in the sixth round, but still pushing forward. Part of the fighter. The Falcon knows he's got the job done. Can he put the icing on the cake? He steps off for a moment, just looking to finish with one final flurry. As Vicente walks him down right to the final belt. Pressure from the start, respect to him. The Falcon, a cut above in control from the start and well scorecards will be yeah i don't know how you wouldn't see that uh, you know, immaterial yeah he will be moving to tetano without a shadow of a doubt and well, i mentioned that fight in costa rica where he got it on a split decision but he really won five of the six rounds we will know that he can't afford to to leave anything to the judges in boxing we all know that but he waves that flag aloft anything less than a shutout would be shocking Wow, Puerto Rico, proud New Yorkers. Uh, sporting Edgar Belanga in the main event later on. Tonight, as will Pablo Valdez, who is up next against Damian Fernandez from Buenos Aires in Argentina. Pablo Valdez is a fan favorite, and we're starting to see the crowd is starting to fill up. You guys go back, how many years would you say? Sparta? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shoots 20 through 23 now, so we're looking at five, six years. Wow. Yeah, I was at his pro debut in, in Dominican Republic. I helped him, helped him train for that, helped him make weight for that fight as well. And uh, he helped me for a number of my own fights uh, as a sparring partner. Well, he was scheduled to uh, box at 147 pounds, but well, from, from what he alluded to at the press conference and what we heard of Damien Fernandez too, they both had a rough couple of weeks and they kind of agreed that let's just do this one on one five four. Very sensible, I think, given the circumstances. Sometimes things outside the ring in boxing are 
are far more important than things inside them. And I think it suited both guys. Yeah. Oh, actually, I stand correct. I've known him way longer because <laughs> I forgot. He told me a story. He was in the corner of one of my opponents in a kickboxing fight when I was 19 years no old. Way. Yeah, so I've actually known him for 20 years. Wow. I didn't know him then, but he, he knew me. He was in the corner of a guy that I fought, another Puerto Rican fighter. Right, I'm hearing the uh, scorecard to it, so let's head to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds here in New York City, we go to the judges' score totals. All three judges scored this bout identically, 60 to 54. For your winner, by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated, the sniper, Ofacio Falcon. So a shutout as expected for first winner of the night here at Madison Square Garden, Fasio Falcon from the Bronx. He can sit and enjoy the rest of his night. It was a very competent performance to go 10-0. Yeah, I mean, took it to 10-0 tonight, got the rounds in with a, with a tough guy who was 